Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, talk a little bit about a continuum definition of, uh, of strain. Okay, so when we think of strain, often people have this intuition that the strain is some sort of change in length over the original length. And that's fine from a uh, standpoint of just considering a one-dimensional element, but, you know, again, if you have some type of continuum that deforms in some other manner, right, maybe he's got a hole in it or something like that, and the hole stretches, it's very difficult to talk about this deformation process and identify what the change in length over the length is. In fact, the strain really needs to be a function of position and changes uh, from point to point in the same way that the displacement is also a function of position. So there's a displacement field. So we have a strain field which is defined at a point and a displacement field which is defined at a point. Okay. So the strain we have to get away from the concept of it being a, a quantity that's defined over a finite length but defined at a point. Okay. So in general, we if we're given a displacement field, that dictates the strain. Okay? So that's what I want to derive now. Alright, how do we get the uh, strain field from a displacement field? So if you look at a deformation process like this, you might have a point here, which is in some initial position, and it might deform to a new position, and the difference between those two is the displacement of that point. Okay? So how things deform in the vicinity of that point are going to be related to the strain. So we have to look at deformations relative to a point. So it's going to involve gradients of the displacement field. All right. So we remember from undergraduate uh, that there's two types of strain. We have a normal strain. And then we also have, uh, which I'll call epsilon, and then we also have a shear strain. And there's, you know, engineering, that's really the engineering shear strain, right? Gamma. And they have two different pictures, okay? So let's just look at the normal strain first. So let's just consider, you know, normal straight in the x-direction. So if you start off with a little chunk of material, let's start off with a little cube of material. So this is some very small differential element, delta x. So if you were to look at this, this would actually be a very small point in this body. Okay? So if you blew it up, it might look something like this. But it's supposed to be a finite point. Alright. So if this uh, this edge might deform to a new location. Okay? And then this edge might stretch some more to another location. So in fact, this cube deforms from this dashed line to the solid line. So the amount this point moves, I should do it down here, okay, is going to be u of x, all right? This point here is x, okay? The amount this moves, okay? This is the displacement, u, but it's not at x, it's at x plus delta x, all right? And if we expand that in a Taylor series expansion, that becomes u at x plus some delta x times the partial of u with respect to x plus stuff that's of order delta x squared and higher. Okay? Now let's look at the strain in the x direction, the normal strain in the x direction, you know, using these definitions. So the strain is going to give you the change in length 
over the original length. I'll use something else here. So the original length is going to be uh, uh, delta x. That's the original length, right? Now the change in length, the delta length, is going to be the deformed length over the original length, the delta x. Okay? I'm sorry. Minus the original length. Okay? And now what's the, the, the changed length, the deformed length? Well, it's going to be delta x, right, this, plus the amount that this has stretched. Okay? So plus this distance from here to here. So that distance is going to be plus u of x plus delta x times the partial of u with respect to x plus stuff that's order delta x squared. So it's delta x plus this distance minus this distance. And so that distance is u of x. Okay? So if you fix that a little bit, ignore my phone, this would then give me, well, let's just move this all up here. So this, this is delta L over L. And we know that delta L, I'm sorry, we know that L is delta X and L prime is just going to be delta x plus delta x partial of u with respect to x plus higher order terms. Okay, because these guys, this one cancels with this one, right? Okay, so we're almost there. Okay, so then that gives me that the delta length is going to be this minus this. The delta x is cancel out, so that just becomes delta x partial of the displacement in the x direction with respect to x plus terms that are order delta x squared. So that gives me the strain in the x direction is simply going to be um, delta l, which is delta x partial of u with respect to x plus order delta x squared divided by the original length with is just delta x. The delta x cancels with this and also cancels with one of the delta x's in the order of and this then becomes the partial of u with respect to x plus terms that are order delta x. So to the first order approximation we can approximate the strain as the partial derivative of the displacement field in the x direction with respect to x. So the normal strain in the x direction is the partial of u with respect to x. You can do the same process with a strain in the y direction and the z direction, and you can get the normal strain in the y direction is the partial of the displacement in the y direction, v, with respect to y, and also the partial I mean, the, the normal strain in the z direction is the partial of the displacement in the z direction, w, with respect to z. So those are the three normal strains, okay? In the next video, I'll do the shear strains, but I'll stop now.